Hello and welcome to the 114th episode of Fur, Fins, and Feathers. Today our guest is Carolyn Rancor of Rehoboth, Massachusetts, who has a beautiful border collie. Welcome <laughs> to our show. Thank you. We are it's very nice honored here. to have you. Tell us about your business. <laughs> what is so, the name of your business? The name of my business is Wet Nose Canine. Um, I started um, back in 2007. It was just for um, wet, it was just for canine massage. So that's all I did um, with my business um, from 2007 until 2018 when I moved to Rehoboth. Um, when I moved to Rehoboth, um, I bought a house that had um, a place in it for, for doing massage. Um, so people started to come to me. Um, and then um, the house actually had a big field connected to it and I was going to use it just to train me and my dogs in agility. Um, so I fenced it in, I got all my equipment all set up and I started to um, just train my dogs there. And it's right down the road from us so I've been by a million <laughs> times and you have a beautiful facility. Oh, thank you so much, thank you, it's, it's so much fun. Um, when COVID hit in 2020, um, some of my friends and some people that could not get into facilities um, because of the closures started to train in my field with me. And then it just started to snowball from there. So we started adding classes. Right now we have six um, agility classes per week. We have private lessons there. Um, two different teachers teach there, including myself. Um, we have agility field rentals. And we have, uh, of course, canine massage that I do in, in my, um, my house. I really would like to learn more about that. <laughs> sure. So um, I started in 2007. I got certified for small animal massage therapy. Um, and basically, um, especially since I've been doing performance sports with my dogs, um, which included fly ball, agility, disc, um, it's really a great modality to keep the dog's muscles in top, um, tip-top shape. As you can see, Rhea is in great shape. Um, I massage her and all of my dogs um, all the time. Um, a lot of my clients have hip dysplasia, or if they have some type of um, post-surgery, they'll I will massage them. You know, because they'll tend to um, compensate on one side or the other based on what type of ailment they might have. Um, so we'll get, put them through a good massage and that will keep their muscles in um, good, good health and um, working and well for them. And in good form. Yep, yep, absolutely. Yep, so it's been great. Um, all breeds? All breeds, yep. Um, I massage all breeds. Uh, the bigger breeds I tend to get a little bit more like hip dysplasia and that type of thing. Um, but I, perf I uh, massage a lot of my friends' performance dogs. Um, before and after um, a trial to keep them stretched out, their muscles in great order, um, keep the blood flowing, um, release any of the toxins that might happen um, throughout um, you know, their rigorous exercise because these are athletes um, and we ask a lot of them um, through you know, their competitions and their training. Um, we put them through a lot. So massage helps keep their muscles and um, their bodies in great shape. <laughs> Not only large dogs, but all, all dogs. All dogs, yep, absolutely. Um, massage is, um, is really has all the benefits that it has for humans. And as you can see, I'll have her dance a little bit. <laughs> there we go. If she stands on her back, um, her back paws, back end, all of the bones and muscles are exactly the same as we have um, for humans. So if I'm, you know, trying to figure out which muscle it is, I'll just look at my own leg and I'll be like, oh yeah, that's the uh, typical muscle that, you know, we might have an, an injury on. Um, that might be their quad and it actually is the quad on a dog as well. Um, so there's a lot of comparisons and there's a, the same benefits of um, human massage. How does it enhance their health? Um, so, like I said, when I massage them, it um, gets the blood flowing. Um, it releases a lot of toxins in their body. So we'll get all of that. We'll flush all of the toxins out of their body. Um, also, I do a lot of stretching during a massage. So once their muscles are um, are warmed up, I can give them a really nice stretch, um, and that will help them keep in shape and not get injured. So it's um, it's been great for my dogs, and it's been great for my clients. 
and you have clients that come from all over Southern New England. I do. And beyond. I do. Um, when I first started, I used to go to people's homes, which was which was great because a lot of the dogs may, might be um, immobile. But um, you know that got to be a lot traveling, uh, quite a bit for massage. So people come to me now. I have a little bit of a reputation, and people um, uh, are happy to come to my my facility and get their dog massaged. So it's been wonderful. Talk <laughs> about your work with in agility. <laughs> so we, I started. Um, Competing in agility about 15 years ago, um, that's part of the reasons I, reason I got into massage as well, um, just to keep my dog in good shape. Um, and so I've had eight dogs competing in agility throughout the years. Um, right what now, breeds? So I started with a lab, a chocolate lab, and I went to Australian Shepherd, and bo now I'm competing with, a, with Border Collies. So I have Rhea, she's four years old, and she's competing um, novice and advanced, she's heading to the master's level. Um, and then I have her half-brother, um, Nick, Nicky, and he's, um, he's still a novice, but he's doing wonderful, he has a great future. Of course, I see Jeff almost every <laughs> other day. Yep. And awesome. why is the Border Collie <laughs> so popular? Well, I really think um, there's a couple of things. One is um, they have a great work ethic. So um, they want to work, especially this one. She has a great work ethic. Uh, she'll. Um, and she's beautiful. Thank you. And she'll walk through, you know, um, a room full of people and dogs, and she doesn't even care about them. She cares about me, and she wants to work. And that, a lot of that is inherent. Um, they also have the structure for agility. Agility, like I said, is very rigorous on their bodies. Um, so border collies are really structured. Um, for the you know launching um, over the jumps and coming down easy on some of the jumps and the different uh, contact equipment um, versus you know a bigger dog who might take a little more of a toll on their bodies. So uh, uh, border collies are really built for it. What breeds other breeds have you worked with? Um, so I had a, a pretty you have a lot of br uh, I've seen you out in the <laughs> field. You have. People come from with different breeds from everywhere. Oh, right. Yeah, well, agility, um, you can compete with any breed, actually. Um, mixed and breeds as well. Mixed breeds as well, yep, absolutely. Um, you know, anything from, I have a student that has a, a big Rottweiler to, um, you know, a Chihuahua, um, all, all different size dogs, all different um, behaviors, all different uh, temperaments. So really, agility is for every everybody and every dog. <laughs> what are some other uh, performance activities you've done? Um, so we competed in fly ball, um, not with Rhea, but with my other dogs, um, which was really, really fun. Fly ball is, is a blast. Um, basically, that's a, um, a relay race with four dogs on one team and four dogs on another team. And you jump over four hurdles, hit a box, releases a ball, and, you've, and they jump back to you. Um, so it's really, really fun, um, and you're on a team with that. So you have uh, four dogs on each team, and then a couple of dogs that are um, like spear dogs. Not spear, I shouldn't say spear, but um, extra dogs, um, you know, so we can swap them out Do if one gets tired. Do you have classes? We don't, we don't um, have yet. classes, not yet, yet for fly ball, um, but it is a lot of fun. And then I've done disc with my dogs, so um, toss and fetch, um, and... Um, there's another sport that um, allows you to do some disc with some agility in it, which is really fun. Uh, Earth Dog is really coming up too. Yeah. Dock diving. Right, dock diving. Yep, dock diving is so much fun. Yep, I haven't done that with um, my dogs yet, but we will. <laughs> Are they, is this breed suitable for dock diving? Oh, sure, sure, yep, absolutely. Um, I see a lot of labs doing uh, dock diving, and I think it's a lot, a lot of power that they have from the back end, um, but that's certainly something that um, a Border Collie could do, no problem, and that's for all breeds as well. Border Collies are so versatile. I know it, I know. They're wonderful. Um, they're, they are very intelligent. And um, what I love about them is they keep me guessing all the time. Um, some, you know, what are they thinking? How they process um, information given to them? It's just they're so smart, and I think it's just um, they're they're just so much fun to figure out and to figure out what they're thinking.
<laughs> Good girl. Good job. So you people come to you from all over New England. Yep. For massage. Mm-hmm. Yep. So they come to um, my place for massage. Um, I have people from all over the country come come to my facility to do seminars, agility seminars. Um, so well, some well-known people, including Jeff, um, world uh, on the world team or um, EO team, and they'll come and they'll do an agility seminar at my house. And um, I have, um, you know, the field, and we have. Um, lunch and you know we have a lot of fun um, so it's starting to get a little bit of a reputation um, I had one um, world team member you know come by stop by on the way to maybe the Canadian Canadian Open um, so they'll stop by I have a room where they can stay overnight um, and they can run with their dogs and, and practice on the way to a competition so it's remarkable so, how you started small and you have really prospered. Right. I mean, part of the co part of it was COVID because um, people really wanted to. Um, they still wanted to train even though their facilities were closed down. And I happened to have this outdoor field, um, so everyone just started to come over and play and train their dogs. And then um, it just kind of snowballed from there. The thing that really fascinates me too <laughs> is that. People are really into performance sports these right. days. Yep, yep, absolutely. And um, you know, that's confirmation has taken a back turn. It, it kind of has. I think so too. Um, and it's just so. I think that with the performance um, sports, um, people are more open to things, modalities like massage and um, chiropractic and acupuncture and that type of thing. And that keeps the dogs a lot you know, a lot more healthy than, I guess, back in the day. Um, when I first started with massage, there wasn't um, another person that was doing canine massage in the Northeast. Um, and I had traveled out to Seattle um, to take a hydrotherapy class for dogs. And when I was out there, everyone was kind of, you know, embracing the different modalities for dogs, massage, any type of body work, including chiro, um, acupuncture, acupressure. But in the Northeast, it hadn't really taken hold. Um, you know, people kind of thought it was woo-woo, or they would think it was, you know, only for like a for the lux luxurious ones, right? Um, but now it's really starting to take hold, and I think that that is helping with performance sports because now we can keep these dogs in tip-top shape, and then we can run them a little bit harder, train them a little bit longer. I recently saw <laughs> a. Uh, I, I saw several videos of people doing dock diving, mm -hmm. and it was fun. Yeah, yeah. They were, it was very informal. Yep. I remember mm -hmm. 42 years ago going to dog shows, and you had to wear a suit and tie. <laughs> and it, right. it has changed so much. Yep, and I think that's another reason why it's starting. It's grown so much is that it's just, you know, it's getting to be more of um it's a family Except, sport. Yep, accepting for everybody and every dog. Whereas back in, you know, confirmation days, it used to have to they have to be full bred dogs with papers and all of that. And now they can do pretty much any any sport um, with any breed. And um, you have a favorite breed. <laughs> um, border collie right now, <laughs> but um, I when I had my Aussie, um, that was my favorite breed at the time. Uh, but I love them all. I mean, I love to ch I love to teach all of the different ones because they all have their different personalities, temperaments. What are some um, of the different breeds you've worked with? Um, so, like I said, I had a uh, I have a Rottweiler now that I, I love to train because I don't didn't know a lot about Rottweilers when she came to me for agility training. Um, so I'm getting to know that personality and that um, that inherent breed um, information. Um, uh, lots of Portuguese water dogs these days. I have a lot of those. Labradoodles, um, some Yorkies. So right across the right across the board, all the different breeds. Ever get any terriers? Yes, yes. We've had some rat terriers, um, border terri border um, border jacks. <laughs> Mix. So they're actually starting to breed border jacks. So they're half border collie, half Jack ter Jack Russell terrier. Not easy to live with, I'm sure, but um, they're incredible performance dogs. <laughs> yeah, okay. 
<laughs> you, you starving? <laughs> Portuguese water dogs. I've had them on my show a couple of times. Portuguese water dogs, And yep. they are fascinating. Yep. And they are great workers. Yep, they are. They are. They're wonderful at agility because, the, because of that. They want to work. Um, and um, they, they're smart. You know, they pick up things really quickly. And they're, and they're athletes, too. They're pretty well um, built for agility. And they really like to, they excel mm -hmm. in performance. Yep, they really do. Yep, I have a, I have a lot. Of, I have a bunch of Portuguese water dogs as, as um, students. So, yeah. <laughs> Good girl. Tell me about her. Her name so, is, how did you come up with the name Maria? <laughs> so I'm a big fan of um, the movie um, Sound of Music. Um, ever since I was a child, um, my mother and my sister and I used to watch Sound of Music sitting on her bed. And back in those days, there was no recordings, right? So it came on once a year, and we'd sit on their bed and watch it. Um, it was a big deal. We'd get popcorn. And so um, I was always a big fan of that, that show, that movie. Um, I spent a number of... Um, competitions up at the Von Trapp Family Lodge. Um, there's a... In Stowe, a in beautiful Stowe, area. Yep. Um, there is a woman, um, actually uh, Maria from the Trapp Family Lodge, um, Maria from Sound of Music. Her, um, it would be her daughter-in-law, um, would be the, um, the woman that would run a lot of the competitions up there. So I spent a lot of time at the um, Von Trapp Family Lodge. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Gorgeous facility. Yep, and it was a great place to have a competition. So we've had a, a few of them up there with the dogs. Um, it just, it was just a beautiful experience. And so I named Maria, um, Ria, for short, um, after um, how do you solve a problem like Maria? <laughs> so she's, um, She's four years old, and she's amazing. I mean, she does everything I tell her to do. She's a great dog. She's really, um, like I said, very focused. She has a great, great work ethic. She'll come out to the field um, where we train, and if I have a class um, of intro, intro uh, to agility class where they've never seen the agility equipment, they've never you know, experienced that environment before, she'll come out, walk right through them, don't, won't look at any dogs, won't look at any humans, she just wants to work. She actually shows off a little bit when she's um, in um, a group of other dogs. Um, she'll, she's my demo dog, so I'll show all of the, new, the newbies um, you know, what you can do with your dog once you get uh, training. So, yep, she's great. And I'm sure that some of them have really gotten into it. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, as a matter of fact, we started, uh, well, since COVID, um, we started doing classes there. And um, starting next month, I have about six students that are going to start to trial. So that's a pretty good accomplishment. I'm proud of that. And I also have a teacher that works for me. Um, at my um, facility, and she also has a few students that are going to start to trial. So it's only been a couple of years um, where they came to us at the beginning of, or the middle of COVID, and they've gotten to this point. So I'm pretty proud of that. That's quite an accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty proud of them all. And they will be competing yep. throughout the region. Yes, they're starting to compete um, actually in, in the next month or so, and then, um, you know, they have, they have their goals and they have um, their um, aspirations and we're going to help them go right through it. And, and Jeff is a wonderful uh, <laughs> ambassador too. <laughs> he is, yep. He's absolutely wonderful. He's always very encouraging and helpful for the, the new people and um, also for, the, for us who have been doing it for 15, 20 years. <laughs> so how can people learn more about agility? Do you let people come to see your facility? Yeah, so we have the classes every week, and I'll let people sit in and watch. Um, if someone is really interested, I'll you know um, refer them to a um, trial, to go to a trial, watch it, maybe volunteer. That's a really great way to learn about agility. <laughs> Are you hungry? 
Um, so I always encourage people to do that, but they can certainly come to my facility, um, watch a class, watch us train. Um, I always have like kind of an open door policy um, because I was there once myself where, you know, I didn't know what was going on and um, it, was, it was great when you find someone like Jeff um, that, you know, just brings you into the sport and says, hey, come see what we're doing. This is fun. So. And he is a marvelous person <laughs> to get to provide an introduction. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> so, what other things do you do <laughs> within within the sport? Um, so, I will um, bring my booth sometimes. So, for this weekend, um, we're going to be down in North Kingstown uh, trialing with Rhea, and um, I'm going to bring my booth. Um, basically, I've just put out a mat and I do massages for the dogs that um, are performing that weekend. So before and after their run, they might um, have me massage their dog. I'll do some stretching at the beginning, um, it's kind of a, like a, a massage that will get their um, blood flowing, um, get them um, stretched out for the run. Does it increase their longevity? It certainly does. Um, in my opinion, it does. Um, because really, if they have injury, um, injury takes a lot, uh, a lot of big toll on them. So if we can prevent the injury by either, um, you know, keeping their muscles in great shape, um, or um, you know, any type of acupuncture or acupressure, making sure that um, we, um, f you know, are, have my hands on my dogs all the time to feel any types of lumps or any tightness. Um, I'm constantly touching them, um, so I think it's really important. A lot of people that have dogs don't even go over their bodies, you know, uh, they feed them from the face and that's it. And they never really go and f feel their legs, give them stretches and things like that. And Jeff is really diligent about <laughs> that. Yeah, he absolutely is. Yeah, I mean, Jeff, Jeff knows he's PT, so he knows um, the, um, the benefits of stretching, the benefits of keeping the muscles and the, the joints um, working. A great physical therapist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you still hungry? <laughs> so, uh, what is the, their longevity for Border Collie? Um, so, their average lifespan is um, about 13, 14 years. Um, you know, depending on uh, their their um, their heritage, I guess you'd say their their lines. Um, but I would say that's about about right. Um, the bigger the dog, typically. The shorter the I've lifespan. I've seen them working at a trial, a sheep trial in Ireland. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yep. Um, herding is an amazing sport. Um, I, I haven't done um, herding with my dogs, but it's very difficult and it's, um, it's pretty amazing that how they can do that. Um, I've competed with um, a dog. My Australian Shepherd was 12. Um, when he stopped competing, so and I know I know of dogs that are 14 still competing in agility, border collies, so they can go quite long as long as we keep them in sh in shape with massage and um, good food supplements and good food. Yep, absolutely. So we make sure we treat our dogs, you know, like we would treat ourselves. Do if we have supplements um, to keep our joints nice and um, fluid, and making sure they're getting really good nutrition. Um, rest, of course. B border Collies don't like to rest or sleep. <laughs> they would rather work and play. Um, so we make sure they have a, a downtime um, and make sure they get enough rest and recovery from a lot that we ask of them. <laughs> She's quite the girl. She is. Good girl. <laughs> She's a really good girl. <laughs> Can you sit? Oh, down. Good girl. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> how do you train her? Um, when, let's say, how old was she when she came as a puppy? Um, she was 10 weeks when she came to my house. Okay. Yep. And I start right away with um, the obedience um, part of it. But starting right at 10 weeks, we start with agility as well. So introduction to wobble boards or things that move. Um, on, a, on a plank, walking down a plank, um, going in a circle, anything that is, you know, not too intrusive on their little, little bodies. 
um, but making sure that they're not fearful of noises. We'll, you know, have um, desensitizing um, games that we play with them. Um, like I said, wobble boards or things that move um, because eventually they need to get on the, a teeter or a seesaw. And um, so we start really, really young and we train all the time. There's always something new to train. So we're training all the time. It's never like there are, it's ne we never get to a point where, where we say they're trained and that's, they're done. <laughs> we never get to that point. Jeff is out there working almost every night. <laughs> yes, yep. There's that's always- different, uh, some different activity. Right, there's always something to learn. And that's the fun part about agility because, um, you know, as good as, if you're the best of the best, you still have something to learn. Um, you st and then you still have, usually, usually at there. that level, you would have more than one dog. <laughs> so you're training. Um, constantly and you're a pretty girl and you have a lovely disposition <laughs> she does she's such a good girl has she been bred she has not nope she's uh, spayed yep <laughs> so what are your future plans for her oh the world's no <laughs> um, we're just gonna keep competing try to keep um, healthy we're gonna try to do our best together as a team um, and hopefully we can get to a podium someday, would be nice. Um, I'd like to go to the Nationals. I've been to the Nationals three times, um, one with my Australian Shepherd and uh, twice with my Border Collies. Um, so I'd like to go back to the Nationals um, with her and also with her half-brother. Jeff has been to Norway or Sweden. Yeah, yeah. He has been to so Holland. Yeah. He's really done some traveling. Well, yeah, he, he certainly has. He's been doing great. Sit. Good girl. <laughs> so you have classes at night? Yep. I have classes on um, Mondays and Wednesday nights and then private lessons in and out of the week um, and on Saturdays as well. Uh, and then there's ring rental um, and we have some seminars. I've had uh, seven seminars this year. Um, and those are usually like a weekend long and um, and people come from all over the country they do yep to teach um, typically New England from within New England to actually learn so um, but I've had um, teachers come up from instructors come up from Florida South Carolina um, up in Canada so that's it's been great it's been a whirlwind it's been just a few years and we're doing really really well so I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the futures um, at uh, Wet Nose Canine, and I'm excited about the future of this dog as well as my other, um, my other little guy, Nikki. And you have a lovely shirt. Oh yes, my shirt, Wet Nose Canine. <laughs> Very nice. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you. We're it was, a, it was my you. pleasure. You're right down the street. We're gonna, as I said yeah, to Jeff, drop by morning, anytime. I says we've got to have her again. <laughs> Definitely drop by anytime. I've really enjoyed. This was our 114th. That's amazing for me. Wow. 114 wow. episodes. That's great. That's great. And Congratulations. All over the country. <laughs> and very much, a very popular in England, in Ireland, and Scandinavia. Really? That's fabulous. I even had someone call, uh, write to me the other day from China. Really? He saw it on YouTube. That's so cool. And he cool. said to me, he said, we have nothing in China about pets. Is that he right? says, and he said, I want to learn. That's so, so great. That was great. Carolyn, <laughs> it was great to see you and Thank have you. you. And we'll see you again on Fur, Fins, and Feathers. <laughs> Thank you.